What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Reality Kingdom, where we put the real in reality or whatever. Purr. 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 We're back Purr. with another motherfucking occasionally recap. <laughs> oh, that rhyme. Occasionally. Occasionally rhyme. Period. Um, today, if you don't see the title, get to it. Baby, get the house it. is getting high some hour. He's gone. He's gone. If you don't know, the fees are currently down for Vito Picks. So, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe during this recording we'll have information that he was even picked for Vito. But if he's not, mm-hmm. girly, he's out. Bad girl, H, out. And I wasn't sure. This is how I felt. If you didn't get our live feed update of week two, go do that because you'll need the details. Immediately. And expeditiously, actually. Expeditiously. Scrum diddly dum. Scrum diddly a barber. Period. But what happened was we got to the HOH results. And bitch. And Miss Fifi won. Miss Mother Delicious. She didn't need the wall comp. Girl. She girl. But she will also be winning. Speak on it. I'm so upset because now she doesn't get to uh, compete in pressure cooker. And I think she honestly would have been hilarious in pressure cooker. She but would've. Mother got her at HOA. She is now the oldest uh, woman house yeah. guest to win an HOA. Period. Mm. Only the second only oldest house guest after Jerry. Three more. So I think this is really a good stuff for Big Brother. This is showing that the step, the uh, competitions are equitable. I think that mm-hmm. they're doing a good job of you know moving us towards more equitable competitions that more mm-hmm. people can win. I'm really excited. Like she has an HOH. She is the oldest house guest this season, and she is now week three HOH. And this is good because we're going to get into a lot of the connections that she's able to make. And now mm-hmm. the respect factor. Like you have a comp win. And you're going to take out a huge person in Heisman. That's win equity right there, babe. That's a resume move. So it's like, this is why we preach for equitable competition. So every person can be an active member of the gang. Mm -hmm. And the diverse casting. Heisman won the last HOH. And he's one of the older castmates. Yeah. She won the next one. Riley won the first HOA. She's a woman. Women don't usually win the first HOA. Yeah. And like leaving week one in typical Big Brother cast, week one, Felicia would have went home. She wouldn't have even made it to this HOH to win it in a lot of older seasons. Wow, just in. Feed your back. Hyphen was not picked. (laughs) And just like that, Hyphen will be evicted from the Big Brother. By a vote was, of unanimous to zero, Heisem. Unanimous have the third been unanimous vote. It's getting it's gonna be another unanimous vote, girl. I mean, when you're, I mean, when you have a a mother like Sari running it, yeah, girl. So Felicia won HOH, and I was honestly, I was like, maybe if actually one of the professors won HOH, they won't do this Heisem plan. Yeah. Quickly, we found out that's a that no. Sari and Izzy had a conversation very immediately, and they were like, "Do you think she's gonna do Heisem?" And Sari was like, "She better." better. And she meant that. <laughs> better. <laughs> better. <laughs> like, it was like, damn. So, anyways. Thankfully, um, I think Felicia, like, she's down for the ride. You know what I mean? I do feel like, I don't know. I was, I I, I feel like Loki is biased a little bit because I did want Heisen to stay. So, when Miss Felicia did yeah. not um, kind of, like, do her own thing this week, I was like, mm. However, at the end of the day, like, her closest ally is Sari. Her being Sari's closest ally is going to guarantee her, like, top three. So, it's mm-hmm. like. Girl, do what you gotta do. Yeah, because initially her target, like initially, initially in her mind, she was like, I mean, Jack can go home, you know. Um, especially because last week she kind of clocked that Jack is the brains of the operation of the non-professor people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so apparently was- before the vote, Jack was walking around telling people, oh, yes. Felicia flipped these people. The vote is flipped. Mm-hmm. These people are voting with us, and and Jack did. I mean, I'm Felicia say did not like that at all. So initially she was gonna do that, but she had a conversation with Sari and Izzy. Sari and Izzy was like. Mm-hmm some could go this week and she was like you know what he could he definitely could and so that's been the plan so the plan is to now i'm jagging cameron back door heisem and they plan on using the veto mostly on jag um but she told cameron that it's going to be on him so she told cameron and almost everyone else in the house the plan except for heisem of course and red right is red the only other person Red was the only other only. person that did not know because they don't trust Red. And now, recently, a joke made from Corey has made them distrust Red even more. So, mm-hmm. Sari, the past week, once they started turning on Heisem, her and Izzy started to believe that Heisem had the intention of working with 
Cameron, Red, and Bowie to some extent. Mm -hmm. So she kept grouping literally half of the Professor's Alliance together in some type of an alliance Mm -hmm. that may work against her, which is why she wanted Riley to stay so bad in the first place. Um, Now, somewhere towards the end of the week, Corey made a joke about some alliance called the Middlemen, including him, him, America, Bowie, and Red. For some reason, Sari believes Mimi's name was mentioned, or she, for some reason, believes Mimi's in that alliance. Mm-hmm. So this week, a lot of the actions that take place is them acting on the idea that Hyson's about to go home and that Bowie, Cameron, and Red are working together mm-hmm. in a group with Corey, American, maybe Mimi. And the, and the Corey thing really probably is in her mind because she also thought Hyson and Corey, well, Hysom did approach Corey with the with the little fake little brain brawn thing. Yeah. And she really, really believes that. So it's like it's really validating her right now. And I think that's also why she's grouping in Mimi, because every she's had a thought about all of these people and Mimi. So she's like, mm, in my mind, everything's validating. So everything's that validating. Just makes sense. And Mimi. Um, so I think that's what she's thinking. She's thinking it makes sense. And this is kind of what helps uh in a way kind of get this group together alongside Jag. So what Jag does is he's been bringing up alliances to everybody. He's been trying to make his group real bad. So um, him and Felicia, or he talked about it to Suri and them last week a little bit about a certain amount of people working together. And then this week he reiterated it in the conversation with Felicia and they kind of came up with a new group of people. Um, And Felicia really wanted it too. Like she was very engaging in this conversation. She was open to it. Um, And the new group of people is going to be Felicia, Sari, Izzy, and Jared, mm-hmm. and Jag, Blue, and Matt, the seven of them. And, and I want to say shout out to Jag a little bit. You know, this okay. is the third alliance he didn't pitch, and it's finally yes. working. Because, I mean, yes. Felicia is very much down with this alliance. She's so yes. down with it that she basically exposes the entire professors. She exposes that the middlemen are working together mm-hmm. to Jag. I mean, they're openly now talking gang with Blue and Jag throughout the week to make sure that Hysom goes home. They mm-hmm. also have a very interesting relationship with Matt. Well, Matt. It's so um, weird. They so, love Matt. Yeah, at this moment, they seem to be very, very loyal to the idea of this group, which, I mean, I just don't really know if this is going to be good in the long term. I'm trying to think like, okay, let's say they get their way and it goes Hysom, Red, Cameron, Bowie. Like, you're going to be in jury with America, Matt, Jack, Blue, who are all going to have each other's back over them. I truly believe that. I do think Sari has enough for that thing. Sari, specifically, she's good. She's safe. I think she's still solidified a top three. My issue is that once you guys are in jury, let's say America wins that wall first mm-hmm. week in jury. Mm-hmm. America's not putting up Jag, Blue, or Matt. Matt. I don't believe. Yeah. I genuinely don't believe that. And mm-hmm. if Bowie, Red, Cameron isn't there, who's <coughs> going to go up? I just think it, 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 like, the thing is, they're choosing to make the game more interesting and harder for them. Yeah. And I'm excited to see that because that's where it's going to get nasty. Right. They want to go to the end with players who are, I mean, fairly decent. And loyal to each other. So if they want to do that and make the game interesting, that's fine by me. It's just, it is definitely the past of, I think it's the path of most resistance. Like they're actively choosing to remove themselves from allies who, in my opinion, are blindly loyal, especially like Bowie and Red. Mm -hmm. Like, and they think they're these masterminds that's been plotting against them. And it's honestly not true. It's honestly just not true. At all. It it just, and I do think this alliance is going to work because they do like Matt and, um, they just really don't trust everyone not in it, including down to Corey. Like, Sari constantly still talks about how she really can't go too far with Corey. She's probably right, you know? Yeah, because Corey's um, not, like, not, he definitely will be after her. And he's definitely going to be after her. So it's like, she just really doesn't trust anybody not in that. And it's not like she trusts Blue that much. But I think they do like Matt, and they know that he's going to just do what someone tells him to, no shade. And I think... They like the camaraderie that Jag brings, the the strategic. Because, you know, Sari and Izzy just talk to each other all day about nothing, or the same thing over and over again. And Jag is someone who will probably do that, too. So they probably love talking to Jag, honestly. It seems like they're starting to like it more and more. So I think this group is probably going to become a solidified thing. And the plan was um, to veto Jag. And they didn't tell Red this at all. But what mm-hmm. happened was Cameron who knew about the plan, thinking mm-hmm. he might be the one uh, vetoed. Did he even know he was getting vetoed? Or did he think, he thought he was getting vetoed? 
I think she everyone else. Was, no, she told him she wants him to play in Winby, though. Yes, okay. She wants him to play in Winby. <laughs> so Cameron ends up telling Red, his closest fucking ally, of course, mm-hmm. the plan. And Red is like, damn, I didn't know this. And everyone else did. They don't yeah. trust me. They literally are. And he said, I've been feeling this. I've been feeling like they've been kind of like avoiding me, not really talking to me that much, not telling me things. Yep. Um, and this is when Red, you know, he's like, well, let me get to work. So first he talks to Bo, and he kind of like brings up the idea of, you know, I feel like, you know, we could be told a little bit more stuff. I could be told a little bit more stuff. And, you know, they didn't really, they haven't talked to me much. I don't feel too comfortable with the woo. And Bowie, I'm thinking, oh, Bowie and him could really come together. They're both left out. They don't trust either of them, girl. <laughs> Bowie, Bowie is die by bitch down. Bowie is still on bye bye. I mean, that's the thing. Bowie and Red, like Red, he got this information and he wasn't like anti professors. He was like, well, let mm-hmm. me make sure I'm closer with them. Bowie took this information and was running to go and tell Sari. Yep. And the comic book room, and then Bowie comes, I mean, then Red, Red comes in Red. after her. And Red starts to express how basically he's feeling a little bit left out and that mm-hmm. he keeps reiterating to them, I'm loyal to the professors. And um, I know that there are some bigger targets in this game. And there are people, he even drops Hysom, who have been making a lot of people upset, like his days are numbered. Um, Felicia's in the room at this point as well. And she starts basically dropping, okay, well, <laughs> if I consider putting up Hysom, what would you think? As if this was the first time ever considering it. Mm-hmm. And Red was like, I'm down with that. Like, I'm fine with that. I don't care. He can go. I'm lost to professors. The original pact was us minus Hysom. So Hysom yeah. can go. I don't care. And so he was then informed about the plan. However, mm-hmm. some hours later, we get the real tea. Sari yeah. didn't believe any of that shit. She believes that Bowie told him and or Cameron or both of them. She all of them together. All yeah. Corroborated. And Bowie came down trying to act like he's loyal to the professors because they talked prior to. Mind you, Bowie is loyal down. So All she did was snitch on him. I don't know how that made it seem like... Well, that's the thing. Because she couldn't get there in time. She feels like she wouldn't actually come down and warn yeah. me. They were talking and they got caught. And it's honestly, it's hard to explain because it's honestly all delusion. And I love Sari, but a lot of it comes from nowhere. <laughs> However, like I said, it really doesn't directly affect her now because... It's iconic that she is now in the center of the game in this way. We were talking about off the podcast, like Jared was the one that's supposed to keep her safe with the other side, but now she has to keep him safe. She is in the (laughs) core of this. He's a fringe. So regardless of whoever wins at any of these points, she's going to be good. My only fear is that if they take out everyone around her and she's going to get the end with people who don't want to take her, you know, we can have another Sabira Micronesia, Mm -hmm. you know, and I would hate that, you know? So I just, I, I was comfortable with her in the professor's core because she was surrounded by no shade. A lot of people who were just were not playing the game that were going to be loyal to her. Now she's playing with people who are playing the game a little bit more and are more loyal to each other. So it's going to be a little bit harder to navigate depending on how these competitions go, especially if they want to get out all of these fringe players like Cameron Red Bowie. Mm-hmm. Like at some point, the core has to get attacked. So yeah. that's going to get really interesting. It is. I don't know. I'm I'm very interested. I think Cerise savvy enough personally, but a part of Cerise's game now is to Jared of it all. She wants Jared at the end too. And it's like, even if Cerise might not get cut, Jared could or Izzy could too prematurely and it could fuck her up. So I think it'll be an interesting season just because she's taking a harder path, to be honest. So I think it'll be interesting. I'm ready to see what's going on. Um, stay tuned for the rest of the, digital, the uh, occasionally recaps. I almost called it digital daily. That same thing. <laughs> same thing. But yeah, um, bitch, that's it. We out for now. We out. For now. <laughs>